The little Jewish boys, just like the little Christian boys, they grew up, ah, they love David because he's the little tough guy. When my kids were little, we would dress up and act out the Bible stories. My son's favorite two stories, David and Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, you probably, what? He's a little guy who wanted to see Jesus, so he climbed up in a high tree. My kids would use this as an opportunity to disobey and to climb on things. My sons would climb up on bookshelves. They would stand on the table. They would stand on the countertop in the kitchen. I'd be like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to climb on stuff. Dad, we are acting out the story of Zacchaeus. We are trying to organize our theology. Please do not get in the way of our Bible study. I raise very small attorneys and they, <laughs> they used it as an opportunity to climb and stand on things. But their favorite thing was to play David and Goliath. Guess who was Goliath? I was. Every day I got murdered by my sons over and over and over. Dad, you sit there and we're gonna throw things at you and then you die. Okay, great, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Little boys love David. He grew up to be king. The most powerful and the most blessed king in the history of the nation of Israel. There was a low point to his life though. Let's talk about that. Once again, it's a belt related issue. You will see a theme, All right? So David, what was his big, his big fail? Bathsheba. Yeah, here we go. He should have seen that this was gonna be a problem. He's up on his roof. And what's interesting, we like to live as high as we can because we like to look down on everybody else and feel like God. This is, this is why we fight to get to the top of the uh, condo building. That's why we want the house up on the hill. The more money you make, the higher up you get to go. Well, David was literally at the top. He was literally at the top, looking down on everybody. The only person looking down on him was God. So he's looking over his kingdom and he sees a gal taking a bath on a roof. Her name, Bathsheba, should have known this is a problem. When Bathsheba's in a bath, that's God turning on the check engine light, right? Warning, warning, warning. So Bathsheba's in the bath, he looks at her. Now David had already violated God's commandments. In Deuteronomy 17, it forbid a king from being polygamous and having multiple wives. And David had multiple wives. He was a passionate man, but just like you and I, he had a shadow side. There's you in the spirit, there's you in the flesh. He was passionate for God and for women. That's a problem. You can't just say, this is how I am. It needs to be how you are under the control of the Holy Spirit. It needs to be you in the side that God made you, not the shadow side. Well, he gets into his shadow side. His passion takes him from God to women. He sees Bathsheba taking a bath. Have you seen the veggie tales on this? The veggie tale says that King David stole somebody's rubber ducky. That's what it says. <laughs> it was worse than that. He stole somebody's wife. It's much worse. He then seduces her, sleeps with her, impregnates her. She's married to another man, Uriah the Hittite. Is this wrong? <laughs> a lot of women said yes. A lot of dudes were checking sports scores. Okay. <laughs> Is this wrong? Yes. yes. Should you be looking at naked people you're not married to? No. What about if it's from your rooftop or on your phone? Pastor Mark, please move forward. Okay, so, um, so what happens is he sees the gal, he seduces her, he impregnates her, and then her husband is a warrior, he's a soldier, he's off in battle, he is putting his life on the line to defend the king and the kingdom. He is the portrait of absolute loyalty, and David is not. And David realizes, she's pregnant, he's at war, he's gonna know, this ain't his baby. So I'll bring him home and then he'll sleep with his wife. And then his wife and I will come up with this great scheme where she will sleep with him. And then she will tell him that it's his baby and he'll never know that I committed adultery and that he's raising my child. Okay. Now, some of you don't know the Bible very well. And when you walked in, if I asked you, do you wanna be like David? You're like, yes, I'd be like, no especially us married guys, please don't be like David. 